welcome to this rhythm video which coincides with issue number 300 and it's look at groove, time and feel. And here we're going to take a look through a few different ideas that hopefully you can uh, find useful and apply to your time playing. So we'll kick off with uh, a, a basic uh, a groove with some eighth notes on the hat, something like this. And so there I'm looking to play the eighth notes with a reasonably even feel. And sometimes drummers who perhaps have developed a bit of the molar type motion uh, with the downstroke and upstroke can tend to utilize that uh, technique quite a lot in the time playing. And so that sort of groove uh, would then sound like this. movement between an accented note and an unaccented note can tend to have a sort of start-stop effect on the, on the groove. So if, if I play that again and then follow it up with the, the feel that I played originally, you should, should hopefully feel the pattern sort of get up and, and get moving. So often that arguably simpler approach can give the pattern a little more drive. Uh, so how about now we, we go the opposite way and where just a second ago we emphasized the quarter note. Let's now emphasize the upbeat. That can be a nice quality to add to a groove and it's actually a deceptively challenging pattern that. Some drummers tend to try and achieve that sound by just playing the upbeat eighth note. So the and of every beat, three, four, one. And that tends to have a, a, a different sound possibly less fluid sound than playing all of the eighth notes, but emphasizing the upbeat eighths. Now let's try adding that upbeat emphasis to a couple of other hi-hat feels. So how about if we take this broken 16th note hi-hat pattern. Let's say you want that rhythm, but you need to give it the upbeat emphasis. That's actually quite a tricky pattern as well. So it becomes this, three, four. quite similar to what Bernard Purdy plays on Kid Charlemagne. How about if we try it with a single hand 16th note groove like this? So we'll add the upbeat eighth note accent to the 16th notes. I can remember the first time I encountered this, it completely threw me a curve and I really struggled. So three, four.
another thing that can have a, an effect on the, the feel and the sound of the hi-hats is what your left foot is doing whilst you're playing time. Some drummers tend to bounce their left foot up and down and that will tend to thin out the sound of the hi-hats. I'll move between keeping the foot still and that movement and you should hear that uh, impact on the sound of the eighth notes. You'll perhaps have noticed in most of the examples I've played, I've, I've used some ghost notes and that can help convey that 16th note movement by filling in the missing 16th notes uh, in, in the pattern. Essentially what we're trying to achieve is this sound. Uh, it's obviously kind of difficult to put the ghost note in before the backbeat, but it's frequently the done thing to put the ghost note after the backbeat, so this sound. And achieving that can take a bit of practice because there's, there's a bit of technique going on there to sort of kill that backbeat and then play the really quiet note afterwards. So I'll just play the, a, a basic feel with that. And so just one thought if you're starting to incorporate the ghost notes on the snare is it's generally the done thing to omit the ghost note when you play a bass drum. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it does tend to clean up the pattern. And if you're just in the process of trying to develop ghost notes, here's a really useful pattern for that. I'll just play it with the kick and snare first, and then I'll introduce the eighth notes on the hi-hats. Another thing that can have a profound effect on the feel of a groove is, is the degree of, of swing with which it's played, ranging from none to completely swung. In other words, say completely straight 16th notes to swung uh, or uh, 16th notes or 16th note triplets. Uh, I'll play that same pattern I've been using throughout, uh, running from completely straight 16ths all the way over to completely swung and back again. To, to hopefully illustrate the point that between those two extremes, there's this area in the middle with various degrees of, of, of swing, which would be hard to notate, uh, but it's important that you're uh, aware of them. So just then I was trying to move between completely straight and the, and the swung version of it. Uh, often if you, if you hear recordings from the 60s and 70s, the 16th note feel has, the, has a slight swing to it. Uh, a, a great example of that would be uh, Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love, uh, for example. And so those 16th notes aren't completely straight. Mm -hmm. 
So if we were to push that swing quality a little further, you get to the kind of feel that Stevie Wonder played on Superstition. And to achieve that sort of pattern on the hi-hat, this is where some degree of jazz ride cymbal playing comes into play. So for those drummers that say, I don't play jazz, in order to play that kind of swung funk kind of feel, you sort of need that to be in place. So if you've, in other words, if you've got this, it allows you to play that. Okay, so to wrap things up, um, I'll just play some time and I'll start to apply some of those different ideas just with the same uh, underlying groove running through some of the different hi-hat patterns uh, and then perhaps uh, swinging the pattern and, uh, and hopefully you hear how those different subtle changes affect the feel of what I'm playing. <laughs> 